Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to the new Motion Plus format with iClone 5.5. Uh, basically the Motion Plus format allows you to consolidate all your animation data from your body, the facial animation data, uh, accessory, constraint, and spring animation data all into the same file so it can be easily transferred from one character to another um, or imported or exported from your favorite uh, CG or game engine software. So let's get started right away. I'm going to go to the uh, Actor tab here. I'm going to be using our Monster uh, Workshop Pack here. I'm going to just bring in our indigo base to create our first monster. And we're going to be applying animation to this dude right here. So let's uh, zoom in on his face a little bit. And we'll go to the accessories section. And in the Monster Workshop folder, you have puppet parts, which are basically parts that can be con controlled by the uh, Avatar Toolkit. So we'll add in our uh, ears there, add in some eyes as well. And maybe some eyebrows just for good measure. And like I mentioned before, that's all the stuff that we're going to be able to uh, puppet. Um, and the, the accessory data or the accessory animation data will be saved um, in our file, in our Motion Plus file. So let's add some uh, spring parts as well um, because the spring animation data will also be able to be included um, in your file as well. So if I take those uh, horns, maybe just grab another horn there. Let's uh, move that second horn over to the other side there to look a bit more symmetrical. No one has two horns on one side. All right, there we go. Um, so he's got some horns. We'll give him a tail as well, just for good measure, that, that uh, spring tail. And you can see there's a little spring on the bottom right of the icon there to indicate it's a spring prop. All right, so there we've got our monster there. Now what I want to do first is uh, start off his uh, facial animation. So if I zoom in on his face there, uh, what I want to do is go to the Animation tab and Facial Animation. And we'll give him a little lip sync first. I'm going to be using the uh, uh, audio clip for this one here, an MP3 track. You can also use record your own voice and uh, use text-to-speech. It's going to go down here to uh, sneezing, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so we had a decent lip sync. Of course, you can always go in and modify that further if you'd like. Um, now, to, uh, to puppet the accessories on this monster, we need to go to our uh, set tab here. In the prop section, we'll go down to our monster workshop there, and we'll add in our puppet controller. And this will bring in our uh, avatar toolkit, which allows us to uh, modify and uh, just animate all of the uh, facial features here. So I'll just make that uh, invisible right now since I don't need that. And uh, once I select my character, it'll, it'll activate here and I can use any sort of, uh, of these expressions templates if I want. Or I can also do individual animation uh, with each individual facial part, which is what I'll do in this case, um, just to make it a bit more uh, accurate to, to what I'm doing. So we'll go to the eyes first. And I'm going to be using this uh, record clip. This is going to be real-time recording. You can also do keyframe animation as well with the add key feature here. So I'm just going to go record clip, and then when as soon as I start moving my eyelid, uh, it'll start recording. So I'll just go ahead and do that now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so that's going to be the bottom part of our eyelid there. And I'm going to use the uh, eye blink, do the same thing for that one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so he's kind of a little groggy after his sneeze there. And then we can go ahead and do use the eyeballs as well, kind of move those around nervously while he's sneezing. Uh-huh. Uh, you. Excuse me. All right, so that's decent. Uh, you can always press Control Z and go back if you want. If you want to get the timing right, uh, a little bit. Little, if, the, if your timing's a little bit off, let's go to the eyebrows then and just do the same thing. We're going to be doing a little bit of a uh, make his eyebrows jump while he sneezes. So go ahead and record that. Uh huh. Uh, uh, you. Excuse me. All right, not bad. We'll just go on to the next part then, which is the ears. And we'll go ahead and use the uh, variation slider to make them larger and smaller during his sneeze. So let's go ahead and record that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right. So let's take a look at our final animation there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right. Not bad. So let's go ahead and do the body animation now. Then, so move down to the. Uh, we'll minimize his avatar toolkit first of all. And we'll go to our uh, motion section here and direct puppet. What I'm going to be doing is using my chest, uh, my character's chest here. And I'm going to be kind of moving that around to uh, kind of emphasize the sneeze, make him kind of jerk forward while he sneezes. So for this one, we're going to be using vertical movement. If I preview, uh -huh. you can see uh -huh. that my spring, uh, spring props are taking effect there and they're kind of bouncing around. And like I mentioned before, that spring animation data will be baked into your final motion plus file which can be exported to your uh, CG software as well. Let's go ahead and record that for now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Okay, so he kind of lurched forward quite a bit there. It's a very violent sneeze. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Oh, okay, that's a very violent sneeze. All right, so let's. Um, uh, what I want to do next is kind of do uh, the same thing with the arms, make the arms kind of fly back while he's sneezing. For this one, we'll go to the uh, um, overhead view here. We'll select his right shoulder and kind of just mirror that. And I'm going to be using screen-based rotation. I'm going to preview and show you exactly uh -huh. what I'm going to do here. Uh -huh. Achoo! Kind of. Excuse me. When he sneezes, his arms will kind of fly back like that. So let's go ahead and record that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Excuse me. All right. Good enough for me. So let's go ahead and close that down now. We don't need any more uh, motion or direct puppet. Let's go to our uh, motion puppet now. And I'm just going to be using a an idle motion here. Um, if I preview this idle motion, uh -huh. you'll see it'll overwrite. Uh -huh. If I don't have anything masked out, it'll overwrite the entire body animation, which I don't want. So I'm just going to use the masking tab here and mask out the uh, entire body and just leave the legs and record that so we get some natural leg movement uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so we get a little bit of natural uh, leg movement there at the end. And what I want to do, uh, what I want to do as well on that one is uh, just make sure I go back to frame one in the actor tab and the avatar section. Make sure I select uh, foot contact so we get to take advantage of that natural human IK movement on the legs as well. Okay, and one final part we're going to apply to the uh, animation. Uh, some more data we're going to add. I'm going to go to the set tab. I'm going to be using a constraint animation. So for this one, I need a dummy prop. I'll bring in this uh, 3D block here, or this 3D uh, sphere rather. Um, scale that down a little bit uh, just for uh, to make it a bit more manageable. And then we'll uh, move that up to about eye level here. Maybe that looks about good. And now what I'm going to do is kind of move this uh, prop around using the prop puppet tool and kind of make it appear like my character is nervously looking around before his sneeze. So we'll use the prop puppet tool. I'll be using a vertical uh, movement here. And you can see if I preview and I uh -huh. Uh -huh. move my character, I move my, move my prop around. My character won't follow it yet. So what I need to do is go to my uh, character and the avatar section again. We need to uh, go to pick target. I need to pick our sphere right there. And now uh, my character will be looking at the sphere when I puppet it. So now, now when I puppet it using vertical movement, uh -huh. You'll see my character uh, will be uh, following it around Excuse like that. Me. And I can make his head jerk forward when he sneezes. So let's go ahead and do that. Try and get some right, uh, correct timing here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, you can see that one didn't work out too well. Press Control-Z and do that again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Give him a little bit of a nod at the end there. So we'll just uh, stop that. Make this... Uh, Sphere invisible. We'll take a look at our character and uh, check out the final animation a little bit closer. Uh huh. Uh huh. Excuse me. All right. So not bad for a couple of minutes of uh, real-time puppet animation work. Of course, you can always refine that later using uh, the uh, keyframe animation techniques or keyframe animation tools in iClone as well. So now what I want to do is I want to press F3, go into my timeline, make sure we have our character selected, and open the motion. Uh, uh, track here and the collect clip track and we'll just zoom out a little bit on our timeline and you can see that uh, Excuse me. Probably want our animation to end around here. So I can just click and drag left click and drag in the collect clip track And I'll press uh, right click there and add motion plus to library uh, Now here is where you uh, can define which uh, animation data you want to export uh, with your motion plus in this case, I want to include almost everything here. I don't need to include the, include the uh, visibility uh, data there because the uh, visibility, we don't have any visibility in this one. We'll probably do that in a future tutorial. But we have, uh, you know, spring state and uh, animation for our accessories. So we definitely want to include that. So we'll press OK and we'll just call this uh, sneeze uh, right there. Save that to our motion plus folder there. All right, so there's our uh, animation all done there. What I can do now is I can actually uh, just uh, go back to frame one. I can right click and I can remove all animation from this character because we already have it applied. We don't need this avatar toolkit anymore. We can just uh, minimize that. What I'm going to do is I uh, import in another character here just to show you how you can uh, transfer that animation data. So I'm going to be using uh, Groucho's base here. I'll grab Groucho and just bring him over here. And what I'm going to do is transfer that, uh, just apply that motion plus uh, file to Groucho. But first what I need to do is I need to uh, give him the same um, props, the same accessory, animated accessories uh, that Indigo has here. So I'm going to go to the Accessories tab here, make sure we're in the Puppet Parts, and we'll add in those uh, ears, the same ears. We'll adjust the colors in just a moment here, but first I want to just add them all in. Add in the eyes as well. 
and then we'll bring some bring those same eyebrows as well. Now you have to ensure that the uh, naming the naming conventions are the same as well. Um, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, if I just minimize the content manager now and I open up Indigo's track here, in order for the motion plus file to apply correctly to the second character, you have to ensure that the accessories are named the same. So you can see I iClone automatically adds this zero in, in brackets here, uh, which we don't want at this time. So we'll just uh, select each um, uh, accessory there and take out that uh, zero in brackets and that way they'll have the same naming conventions and there'll be no problem applying that uh, accessory animation um, via Motion Plus. Alright, so now everything's named the same. What I can do as well is uh, go in there and make sure that I uh, adjust the materials. Let's select the standard two material to the ear. Bring that hue up to about 94 and we'll do that for the other ear as well. The second standard two. Just bring that up. We can go ahead and do that uh, same thing for the eyes as well, for the eyelids. Uh, increase the uh, hue there. Don't, want to be, don't have to be too incredibly accurate. Uh, the eye blink as well. Make sure everything is kind of consistent there. Bring that up. And then we'll do uh, the same thing for the second to uh, the eyelid on the right eye. Just change the color. And the second eye blink as well. There we go. All right, so now we have an entire new, uh, entirely new Groucho here. Um, the, uh, he's more color coordinated, uh, color coordinated than before. Uh, in addition to that, I can also uh, adjust the uh, accessories as well if I wanted to scale down the eyes, for example, and make those a bit smaller and maybe uh, select each individual eye and maybe uh, move them apart slightly. And then we'll have a completely different looking monster. So you can see that uh, looks a bit, uh, bit lost there. And we'll do the same thing with the eyebrow, maybe just uh, select this and uh, drag it over to uh, align with uh, each individual eye. There we go. So we have the same uh, same accessory props, but they look a little bit different. You can even do the same thing for the ears as well. If you wanted to uh, increase the size of those as well, you can do go ahead and do that. Give them big trumpet ears there. All right, so everything's uh, taken care of. Now what I want to do uh, is before um, I apply any animation to these characters, I want to reset the animation data in the scene because some of the uh, Monster Workshop accessories can already contain a uh, default animation. Uh, so if you uh, come across that problem, just go ahead and uh, reset the animation data in your in your project and everything will, will uh, be cleared from those, uh, all the animation data will be cleared from those accessories. And now what we can do is go to our uh, content manager and we'll go to the uh, animation section here and in Motion Plus, let's find our sneeze right there. So what I'll do is I'll apply the sneeze to uh, Indigo first. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so you see everything worked as it's supposed to do there. And we'll just go back to frame one and we'll apply the same thing to Groucho and see what happens. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. All right, so you see all the accessory animation data from the body and the face uh, transferred over correctly. So that's basically how easy it is to transfer um, the Motion Plus data from one character to another, which saves you tons and tons of time. Um, you don't have to animate, uh, you know, the, or sorry, transfer the uh, um, facial animation, the body animation separately, the access accessory animation separately as well. Let's try and uh, add in one more character just to give you a, an example of how flexible this is. Um, now I'm going to go to the actor tab here, and I'm going to go into our face line character pack here. Whoops, we want to go to avatar first, and our facial pipeline character pack. What I want to do is maybe just add in this, uh, this bald hunter here, the hunter that's shaved. I'm going to go ahead and add him in. We'll see what happens when I apply the uh, Motion Plus file to him as well. All right, so if I go to uh, Animation and I go to Custom, and maybe just drag in that sneeze onto my uh, Hunter, you'll see the body animation, but there'll be no facial animation uh -huh. because the facial uh -huh. animation consists. Uh -huh. Excuse the facial me. animation of the monsters consists of their uh, accessory props. So what I can do for the for the Hunter here is maybe just go to Facial Animation, and we can go to the uh, Prop Puppet here. And maybe use a profile from Chuck. We'll use this angry one here. Let's zoom in on my uh, character's face here, and we'll just see a uh, 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 chew, something like that. Maybe make him blink while he's uh, sneezing there. So we'll go ahead and uh, just record that then. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh Excuse me. All right, so that worked out fairly well. So now we have our facial animation for our uh, character. And maybe I just want to, if I wanted to add another accessory on, for example, we'll go to the uh, actor accessories here, and we'll give this guy a hat, just to uh, give another example of how you can transfer uh, accessory animation data. So for this one, when he's sneezing, I want his hat to kind of pop off, so 
Maybe about, uh, about here. We want to uh, press F3, go into our timeline. We have our hunter hat selected there. And we'll do our transform track. Right here is where we want our animation to start. So we'll kind of just move it a little bit to create a keyframe. And maybe about here, we'll make that hat just kind of fly up in the air. And rotate a little bit. Make it kind of fly up in the air like that. And then when he brings his head back like this, we can maybe uh, make that hat uh, go back on his head there, rotate it. Move it over it a little bit. Oh, it's in the wrong, uh, wrong area on the uh, x-axis there, so I'll bring that down. And maybe when his hat, uh, when his hat falls back on his head, we want it to be a little bit crooked, so we'll kind of rotate that back like that, and maybe a little bit to the side. Just adjust that a little bit. There we go. That looks like it kind of accidentally landed on his head there. I'm sure it's not too far back. And bring it a little bit down. There we go, that looks about good. Let's make sure there's final adjustments on that one. There we go, so that's what it's going to look like when it lands back on his head. So the timing will be a little bit incorrect for this one. Let's take a look. You can just move those keyframes around. You just uh, bring that uh, key, last keyframe a little bit up further. And zoom in on the timeline. Alright, so that looks not bad. So now what I can do... Make sure our hunter is selected, and in the motion track and the collect clip track again, open those up, and we're just going to do the same thing uh, like we did before. Uh, let's make sure we have the excuse me come up to there. We can kind of just click and drag, and I'm going to add this motion plus to the motion library as well, and we have all that animation data included as well. No spring state this time for the accessory because we don't need it, and press OK, and we'll call this one Hunter Sneeze. All right, and uh, go ahead and save that. And now let's close down the timeline here. Um, we'll just go back to frame one here. We can maybe just uh, um, add in our uh, hunter. Uh, we'll add in a different hunter as well. We'll just add in the uh, same hunter, but uh, the full hunter here with the with the hat and everything already applied. So you can see now we have this hunter zero. Um, but the accessory should be the same name, so we have the hunter hat, which is the same name as the uh, previous hunter, so we don't have to worry about renaming that. Let's just make sure we uh, reset all our animation data here, and let's uh, apply that uh, motion plus, the new motion plus to our hunter there. So in animation section, uh, motion plus, let's go to our custom folder, and we'll add in uh, hunter sneeze, that new hunter, and we'll see if the accessory and animation data and everything um, transferred successfully. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so you can see a totally new character, um, the same accessories, uh, same facial animation applied and everything like that. So that's how easy it is to kind of uh, transfer animations from one character to the other. Now, of course, if I wanted to export this to, uh, to Maya or, or Unity or any of your uh, favorite CG software, we can just go to the Actor tab, um, make sure that we have our actor uh, set up in 3D Exchange. So we'll just go Edit in 3D Exchange, and that'll uh, load in our actor there. And so that'll just import really quickly. Um, don't worry about that. The animation data will be removed. Okay. And what we're going to do is add in the, uh, we'll go back into iClone here. So we have our character imported and we'll go back into iClone here and F3 and in the collect clip track, we can actually just directly click and drag and we can right click and directly add that to 3D exchange. So add motion plus to 3D exchange and then we'll see that, uh, uh, -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's the uh, animation in 3D Exchange. And once you see it in 3D Exchange, you know that this complete animation, complete with the accessory animation data and everything like that, can be easily transferred to your favorite CG software, such as Maya, or your favorite uh, game engine, such as Unity. And here's a look at what the FBX file looks like when it's uh, imported into uh -huh. Maya here. Uh -huh. So you can see that uh, all the you. animation data has uh, been included and successfully exported to Maya. So that's how easy it is to transfer your uh, your uh -huh. Motion Plus files from uh -huh. iClone into other, uh -huh. other CG software. Me. So you can use them in any of your uh, any of your external projects. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and hopefully you learned something about the new Motion Plus format, and hopefully uh -huh. it makes you, it makes it a lot easier for you to uh, transfer your Excuse characters me. or transfer your motions uh, from character to character.